I was taking parts of these pills every three hours, and when I take them, basically, I'd be on two, I'd be on the medication for two and a half hours. The last half an hour, I'd be off, so that I went from perfectly fine to the point where I couldn't hardly move, and I, I had the shakes. I was pretty much at the end of my ropes. Uh, my depression was really bad because, for one thing, I was I was maxed out on my medication. I went. In, I came in here to the uh, University of Utah. I was interviewed by a number of folks on the team that, and I had the surgeries uh, through May and in about August of 2015. Deep brain stimulation is a treatment offered for patients with movement disorders and some other neurological conditions in which we place electrodes inside the patient's brain, which is attached to a type of pacemaker that is implanted in their chest and that delivers electrical stimulation to help treat the problems that they have, such as Parkinson's disease, tremor, uh, dystonia, and other neurological problems. For about four months, I had to come once a month, one to two hours each visit, and then after that, I come about three, every three months, and it's about an hour visit. Since then, we have to come about 32 miles to get here. It takes about uh, an hour one way. It would, it would take a lot of stress off of us, in the sense that we, only have, we have a University of Utah clinic right there within about five minutes of our house. And if the doctor knew, there knew how to do it and the ability we could save about half a day each time we come in here, which is every three months now. After the patients are implanted, they have to come back several times to meet with the neurologist who will do the programming of the device, which should be very tailored for the patient. So it's rare to find this technology and this resource uh, in some areas. So the Ski Institute is working in developing ways to make both physicians and, and patients' lives uh, easier. They build a computational model in an iPad that the clinician can use in the clinic, and you can uh, estimate the area that you are going to stimulate and where the current is spreading and how much energy you need to provide the benefit to the patient. That makes the programming much shorter because you don't need to use a trial and error approach trying every possible different setting. You can actually estimate which setting would be appropriate just based on the feedback from that imaging. In addition to that, this can be used remotely so that the patients don't need to go so many times to the clinic. Uh, you can estimate the setting before and this can be applied by a nurse or someone that doesn't have the same background training in the brain stimulation. If you're a patient who lives in rural areas or many hours away and you get DBS therapy, with the, the type of care that we can provide right now, those patients and their families are signing up to travel to an academic medical center for the rest of their life. And we think uh, this has a, a huge effect on patient quality of life. And so one of the things that we've been doing is exploring whether we can uh, create a care model where patients can stay at home but still get expert management from uh, from their doctors at major academic medical centers. Until recently, physicians have not had the way to see the effects of DBS in an individual subject. So using these interactive visualizations, a physician can uh, look at a model of that patient's brain and change the stimulation settings the same way they would in the patient and get immediate feedback on those effects. This type of modeling uh, for a long time, it's taken a tremendous amount of time to produce. We wanted to drastically speed up that process and just make it much more interactive. The application that we've built to do this actually does this by using supercomputers here at the Ski Institute. If one of our physician colleagues is looking at a, uh, at a patient model on their, their iPad and they want to change the settings, that's packaged up as a request. It's sent to the Ski Institute. These computations are done in near real time and delivered back to them. And then they can see the results, usually in about one to 15 seconds. The brain stimulation is not for everybody with Parkinson's disease and not for everybody with movement disorders. 
Most patients with these conditions tend to respond extremely well to medication therapies. However, about 10 to 15 percent of the patients start to have some degree of uh, complications independent of their medical treatment, and that's when they become candidates for deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation surgery has been like a miracle in my life in the sense that uh, I feel like a normal human being again.